So last video we introduced proteins and we emphasized the fact that they were made out of amino acids. Amino acids. And towards the tail end of that video, we talked how tryptophan became serotonin. I just want to go over that a little bit more in detail. So tryptophan becomes 5-HTP, which you don't need to know, and then eventually becomes serotonin via amino acid decarboxylase. So amino acids really can make a ton of things that we need. If you have excess tryptophan or you don't need it anymore, we have to degrade that. Things that degrade amino acid derivatives, one of the main ones is monoamine, there's that word again, monoamine oxidase. And that helps to grade any amino acid derivatives like serotonin. Serotonin gets degraded into 5-hydroxy endoacetic acid, more commonly known as 5-H1AA. Important because if there are tumors that secrete too much serotonin, you can measure this in your urine. And elevated levels show you there's too much serotonin coming from somewhere. That's just a brief overview. There's something more important, however, that I want to get to. And that is amino groups creating catecholamines. Catecholamines. Catecholamines are very important neurotransmitters. These include norepinephrine, these include dopamine, okay? So we'll start with the big picture, look at how to create catecholamines, and then we're gonna look at little side reactions that go on. We'll start with the amino acid phenylalanine. So phenylalanine with the help of BH4 or tetrahydrobiopatrin and the enzyme phenyl alanine hydroxylase becomes tyrosine. Tyrosine, again with the help of BH4, and the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase becomes DOPA or dihydroxyphenylalanine. We like to just call it DOPA. DOPA, with the help of B6, a lot of these enzymes need helpers. So it's not just important to know the enzymes, it's important to know the helpers. So with the help of B6, DOPA, via DOPA carboxylase, becomes dopamine. And dopamine, via dopamine beta hydroxylase and his friend vitamin C, becomes norepinephrine or norepi. There's a pattern here between the substrate and the enzyme. Helps you memorize it as long as you know the products. The, of course, there's always an exception, and that is the last step. Norepi becomes epi via an enzyme that's not named after norepi, but phenyl ethanoline methyl transferase via his friend Sam. So this is the basics. However, there are side reactions that go on that are just as important. The first side reaction we'll talk about is tyrosine. Let me help clear the board. Let me clear the board. 
tyrosine also becomes thyroxine or it can become homogenistic acid. Homogenistic acid is worked on by homogenistic acid oxidase. That becomes malleal acido acetic acid. And finally that becomes fumarate, which can go into the TCA. One more side enzyme. is DOPA. DOPA can via tyrosinase become melanin. Melanin is what's seen in your skin, gives you pigmentation. That is it for the main reactions and the side reactions. You need to know both. Both the main reactions, the side reactions, and also the helpers. Okay? Now let's see what can go wrong. We'll start at the top. If you have a deficiency in BH4 or phenylalanine, phenylalanine hydroxylase, you're going to have a buildup of phenylalanine. You can't go down the pathway. So increased phenylalanine in your urine is called phenylketonuria or PKU. We screen PKU in all newborns. They might ask you, when do you screen it? It's a few days after they're born because if you screen it immediately after, it could appear normal. Mother could give them, the mother could give them enzymes or they could eat something that gives them the enzymes. So screen a few days after, few days after. And signs, they're gonna have a musty, mousy odor. It's because phenylalanine metabolites cause a smell. They're also gonna have seizures, smell and they're going to have very pale skin. Why is that? If they can't go down this pathway, then they can't make melanin, correct? So all those together is PKU. I ask how you treat it. Well, you will give BH4 and tyrosine. So you start here bypass this whole roadblock. You also want to avoid artificial sweeteners because artificial sweeteners can have phenylalanine. That is the first one that you need to know. Moving down on the list, right here. If you have a deficiency in homogenistic acid oxidase, can't break it down. You have a buildup of this homogenistic acid, and that's called alcaptonuria. Alcap And the metabolites of these are actually pigmented. You can pee it out and your urine will turn pigmented. It can also deposit in your joints, cause pigmented joints, and very painful and long-lasting arthritis. So pigments, in a patient that has pigments, in a patient that has pigmentation and pigmented urine, arthritis, it is this. Don't have to think twice. Arthritis. They might ask how you treat it. Avoid foods that are high in this. Otherwise, they'll just shunt more and more into this pathway. Moving on down. Dopa to melanin via tyrosinase. If you have a deficiency in that, you're albino. There are other causes of albinism, but this is just one of them. Know that enzyme. Tyrosinase. And that actually does it for what can go wrong in the pathway. Last but not least, say we've made all these, and if there's excess, we want to break them down. We talked about MAO, monoamine oxidase, but there's another enzyme that breaks it down, and that is COMT, or catechol. We are talking about catecholamines. Monotransferase, or COMT. 
So these can work on their catecholamines, break them down into metabolites that you can see in your urine. And that is important because if you have things like pheochromocytoma or things that increase dopamine, what have you, you need to find those metabolites. If it's elevated, you know something is wrong. So dopamine gets broken down by COMT or MAL, becomes homovanilic acid. Norepi gets broken down by COMT and MAL to become normetanephrine and finally VMA or vanillo mandelic acid. Epi has the same fate. And by, and by measuring these metabolites, you can tell whether there's too much catecholamines, either from a um, tumor, malignant source, etc. That does it for catecholamines. Hope you understood how important amino acids are to making catecholamines. Hope you understand what can go wrong and how to identify them. Till next time, thanks.